Welcome everyone to another episode of Smack Talk with Sandu and let me tell you something. I love speaking to fighters. I love speaking to UK fighters. But when I get a chance to have a conversation with someone from my ends, from London town, that is when I'm the happiest. And I'm fortunate enough to have followed and documented and just witnessed this guy's career from fairly early on. And it's been a long time since I spoke to him, but it is an absolute pleasure to introduce London's finest MVP, Michael Venom Page. Mike, what is happening? Oh man, uh, I'm good, man. I'm good, I'm good. Uh, yeah, if it, like you, we just spoke, you know, and it's been a long time. It's been yeah. a long time. And yeah. as you say, you were there from the earlier stages. I remember doing some video shoots with you in the, in the old gym, in the yeah. old shoot gym and stuff. Like, yeah, it's been, it's been a while. Yeah, I'm just happy that we're both still here, alive and well. Yeah. We're still yes. in the fight game. We're still doing our thing. And That's him. Here, here's what I'd like to to kind of share with everyone. Um, it's a bit of a private thing, um, but it meant a lot to me at the time. Five years ago, when I was leaving ESPN and I was kind of putting my hat down as a journalist and going to, kind of going in a very different direction in my career uh, in this in this fight game, um, a lot of people reached out to me, DM'd me, texted me saying, oh, we're going to miss you as a journalist, but good luck, yada, yada, yada. I got a phone call from Michael and, you know, it was a 10, 15 minute conversation. And I just want to say it meant a lot to me. And it's th those little things that as you get older, you remember and things stick with you. And you kind of just ask me, hey, what's going on? Why are you leaving? What are you doing? What's happening? We're just getting started here. What's happening? Right. <laughs> and, and so and I just wanted to kind of say to you now publicly, A, how much that meant to me. Um, and it's something that I kind of really hold on to when I think about that particular period in my time, uh, mm -hmm. in my life rather. So I just want to say thank you for reaching uh, out. No, 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 no worries, man. No worries. Like, yeah, uh, like I said, we were doing a lot of work together back then as well. And uh, you, you're, you're great at what you do. So yeah, man, it was a, it was a shock for us. <laughs> Listen, I'm back. I'm technically not a journalist anymore, but I'm finally back interviewing, mm. having conversations, producing Amazing. content uh, and doing what I want to do uh, in my life. And it's, it's great to have that that freedom. Um, there's so much to talk to you about because it's, like, <laughs> it's been so long, so long since I last spoke to you. But before we kind of get into Bellator, the career, the boxing, the BKFC, everything. Mm. Very recently, you were in Miami uh, yeah. for Izzy versus Pereira. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I just would love to kind of get your perspective. Why were you in town? Were you in this camp? Were you just there to have a good time and show support? Why were you in town yeah. for that one? So um, after my fights, anytime I'm in the in the States, yeah, if you remember, I always go, I've got family over there in, in Miami. So I always go to see them. And I haven't seen my, um, my nephews and my niece over there in a little while. It's probably about two years. Obviously, I speak to them regularly and we see them and on Zoom calls and so on and so forth. And my siblings have traveled a couple of times or we've had to travel a couple of times. So I've seen them, but I haven't seen the kids. Um, so I was like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stay out there for a little while. So after this next one, cause you know, I've had back to back fights. Let me go over to the States and just stay with them for a little while. To be fair, I'm not even considering, uh, there's going to be a fight in Miami. Um, and then, uh, when I realized I'm actually going to be the there at the same time, I was like, oh, there's no way I'm missing oh there's no way i'm missing he connected uh, uh i think last year maybe a year before and it's one of those things where you, you never know how you're gonna like we, we, we at the time we were managed by the same person and you never know you know you hear everyone says oh yeah you guys would get along if you meet but you never know until you actually meet that person but the second we met it was just like it was just connections <laughs> bro man straight away um and yeah so we've obviously stepped, uh, stayed in touch i speak to his, his brothers and stuff as well um so then when i heard i was going to be there i thought like it would be a great reunion to just go and see them guys anyway yeah but then obviously to go and witness that fight and i'm glad i did because it was just an epic night it really was an epic night what are one of the greatest nights in recent memory and is, and can you just kind of speak to you obviously know izzy to a certain level now like mm -hmm. but also you're a fighter when you have taken three l's to the mm -hmm. same guy and you have to mentally psychologically get ready to finally get a w and he finally yeah. does it and he does it in yeah. the most spectacular fashion the finish the celebration the speech mm -hmm. you know someone that's now you know getting close to him as a friend what was it like for you to experience that 
Oh no, it was unbelievable. I, I lost, I lost my voice just uh, being out there shouting. I mean, nearly fell over everybody, like just cheering <laughs> in that moment. Um, it was unbelievable. Even, even in the build-up, seeing them, you know, a few times, just uh, you know, in the, a few days before the fight, and you could just see us in the zone. But also, I like to because we're very similar. I like to relate how I would have been, how I would have taken you know, how, where I would be mentally. And I was saying to people, I was like, because, you know, people were asking me, like, you know, what do you think? I was like, putting myself in that scenario and knowing that we're very similar, I feel like he's going to be very dangerous. And it's because when you've, when someone's got that kind of mental strain on you, on the build-up, you know, even the UFC was pumping a lot, this, oh yeah, this is the guy that's beating him, this is the guy that's beating him. Sometimes these things can seep into your mind. And then when it actually happened, it's like, ah, uh, man, like, it, it, I think it was more, it just got to him. It just got to him there. But now that you've lost it, you have nothing to lose anymore. The damage has been done. So going back in now, it's like, it. if he beats me again, then it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. He, he, you know, everyone already assumes he's better than me. So now this time going in, I'm just laying, I'm laying it all out on the table. And I'm going to, I'm going in there for the finish. And I think that I could see that difference in mentality. His his energy throughout, the, you know, the few times I saw him that week was just, yeah, yeah, it's exactly how I would be. It's like calm, but I can feel the power brewing inside of him. So, yeah, yeah no, it, was, it was unbelievable. So the fight happens, then the after party goes down, and there's my <laughs> guy, MVP, that got the clip of the entire after party. You got Izzy, and you got Kamaru Usman, and yourself just shacking out, having a good time in, in yeah. a Miami club. The, yeah. the, 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 the smartphone just pans to the yeah. left, and then there's legends, Chuck Liddell legends, and Tito Ortiz. Legends, I mean, legends, what legends. a scene that was, man. Man, it was unbelievable, man. I have to say, like, like, like it just right for me, it rounded up the holiday. It was my birthday, like a few days before that as well. So I was like, it was a great way to kind of finish. The, and that was that was literally going to be my last night in Miami. Uh, so I only basically extended my my stay just to make sure I was there for the fight. Um, and yeah, even there was one point, you know, I've, I've, I've gone the, uh, the security guards that pulled me. I think one of them asked me to jump on stage as well. So I've I've, I've gone on stage, we're all dancing, having fun. And somebody in the crowd was like, oh, no, my MVP, MVP. Like, uh, so he calls me over. I walk over and he's, he whispers something and then goes, look, he's standing next to me. And I was like, what? And I look, I look, I look to my right and Chuck Liddell's sitting there. I was like, this guy for me, yeah, because he was the first person I ever watched in MMA. Like, I didn't even, I was the typical fan, like, the, you know, those classic fans that don't care for the grappling and stuff because I didn't understand it. So... When I saw him, I was like, what? I, st I was like, I pulled him, like, come on stage, come on stage. And he's he's like, no, no, no. I was like, there's no way I will let I would, I would fight you now <laughs> just to get you on the stage. And I pulled him up on stage. And, like, it was just a, a crazy moment. And then I, I had already seen Tito earlier in the night, so me and him was talking. Um, and then, obviously, when Tito saw Chuck on stage, he just, he just slowly walks through the crowd. But it was just a great moment. And he's up on the stage. I was like... There's no way I'm not filming this moment. I don't care. It has to be on my phone. And even the shot, I had a shot with, um, there's like the, the four of us, um, me, Izzy, um, uh, Usman, and then there's, a, there's another guy who's a, uh, who's a Afrobeats, but I didn't know at the time. But I was like, yo, guys, let's just get this picture. So it was all, again, no, that, that shot came on my phone because I was like, I, there's these moments that I like to, I'm very present as well, but very rarely do I pull myself out to just take pictures and, and I always miss opportunities and tonight I was just I was just, I was just on it man <laughs> nah you don't give yourself enough credit you always get the best moments even <laughs> um when you talked about how you and Izzy met in London I remember mm -hmm. there was a clip both of you on a rickshaw in the central <laughs> London and, yeah. I, and when I saw that video clip I was like yep I know exactly what that feels like because I've been <laughs> two yeah. three in the morning coming out of a club <laughs> jumping into a rickshaw with my boys so I knew that scene so well it yeah, yeah, yeah it was sick and Izzy literally just stole it he's like yeah we'll be back and we just flew down the road <laughs> now we, yeah it was, it was seriously it's moments like that I, I live for in this, in this game and, you know get to meet meeting like-minded people meeting legends uh, in our sport uh, and around our sport there because there's there's American football stars there mm. you know there was there was musicians there it was 
it was just an an epic moment and to to see it for someone that I'm like you know now got a lot of love for and respect yeah. for and to see him in his element I was like yeah man like I, I was so happy for him and to just to indulge it all but also enjoy it myself do you know what I mean absolutely man absolutely I know you're so loyal to, to London shoot he's very loyal to CKB but I just feel like you got iron sharpens iron right so do definitely, you think definitely. there could we be spoken. a possibility about training together a little bit yeah we've spoken about this already um and even from when we first first met it's just a case of you know when time you know the, the time has to be right because the, the both times um I think he had no he just finished the fight and he wasn't going to be in London too long uh, and then obviously this time I'm not going to do any training with him while he's in the build-up to his fight. So, yeah, you know, I've, I've even spoken about going down to you know, New Zealand and uh, trying to get some work with the guys. You know, I was chatting to the coaches and stuff. Um, we had some good, like, uh, combat talks as well. Like, I like sometimes just picking people's brain, but then also sharing knowledge like that I have as well. And he, even one of the coaches like, yeah, he, he knows what he's talking about. He looked like, it, it was good. Good, some good, some good conversation. So yeah, definitely, I'd like to link up with them at some point. Or if they're over here, we'll link yeah. up and get some training together. Definitely. It's mad because you're both so similar. Kickboxing background in, in yeah. MMA. There's so mm. many, even your personalities, yeah, your showman. <laughs> you like, it, there's so much like, um, yeah, it's yeah. like your long lost brothers in many ways, right? Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's mad. I'm telling you, man. It's crazy. Um, ten years, Bellator. Like mm -hmm. when I think about. Bellator and the fighters that represent Bellator, you are now at the top of that list. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Even though you haven't achieved a championship there, when I think about mm -hmm. Bellator, and that that's a credit to you, and and you've really put them on your back. You've been so loyal mm -hmm. to them. And I know that you've had some ups and downs in the past, but looking back at, at 10 years with Bellator, <laughs> how do you reflect on the time with the with the organization? It's um it, like as you say, there's always always ups and downs and stuff, but I've had some epic moments you know they've they've allowed me to express my my talents on their stage um which has brought some you know some really memorable moments that you know that things that will just people will live on and, and, and remember forever um and even you know being at the ufc and watching you know watching all the, the all the athletes the love that i got from the fans over there which shows that you know um it's i'm not just pinned down to just bellator my you know my style and what i've done and what i've achieved has spread to everybody with it in the mixed martial arts because you know no matter what show I go to now, there's you know fans who you know they they have love for me and they like they, you know want pictures, want autographs, want this and that, and it was nice. It's nice. It's nice to to, to know, as you say, even though I haven't achieved the the pinnacle in 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 shows, uh, I feel like I've um, my name transcended past that point anyway. Um, so yeah, like uh, looking back on it, I've had some amazing moments. Uh, in Bellator, I love what they what they do. Like I said, we bucked heads a, a couple of times, but I like I also like the fact that I can just go to them, say it, and then you know we can hash it out, figure it out, yeah. um, and then and then move forward. So it's a uh, it's a uh, it's been it's been a, it's been an exciting journey. Yeah, when you think about the walkouts that you've been able to do, because you're you're such a showman, the celebrations. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to go box. Oh, I want to go do BKFC. Yes, exactly. You would not have had that freedom in any other promotion exactly. except for Bellator. Yeah, exactly. And I think it, that um, massively helped as well. This, uh, our relationship, the fact that they allow me to express my talents. Um, and I'm a person that is twitchy, man, all the time. <laughs> I'm just like, I want to be back out there. And a lot of times, you know, I rarely take too much damage in fights. So I'm constantly just like, oh, I need to go back out. I need to go back out. And if there's nothing available, the fact that they allow me to, you know, to lean into other shows, um is 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 credit to them definitely yeah. credit to them scott coker um uh for me mike michael Co uh cogan for me um the one of the main reasons that i am still uh with bellator is because of him mm. uh i just like how how direct he is uh he's, he's no bullshit if anybody's met him before you'd understand what i'm talking about he's very direct no bullshit some people don't like it but i prefer it i i like um, hearing the truth as quickly as possible. Um, and then it just allows me to understand where I am uh, um, and then what I need to, what I need to do next. I hate like wishy-washy people or, or people that 
try to appease too much or they don't give you a straight answer. But with him, I never got that. And um, I think he's he's definitely the main reason why I'm like, yeah, okay, Bellator is a good place for me to be just because i got someone there that can, it's no bullshit. He'll, he'll give me the honest truth about everything, no matter what I ask. So yeah, I have to give a massive shout out to him. And again, just the way that um, they, the, those guys have uh, run their shows, as you say, from, for an as an as an entertainer, I love those walkouts. I love those things. Even just those pictures that I get from just the, the, the giant snake behind me and stuff like that. That I just I live for, man. Yeah, man. Well, congratulations on your recent win against Yamauchi. Bizarre you. finish. Biz- like, yeah. thing is, that's just the norm now with MVP fights. Yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes you can see it's a clean knockout. You can, but sometimes I'm like, I need to see three or four replays. I need yeah. to figure out what the hell just happened here. <laughs> In the you moment, me, bro. yeah, you you so you didn't realize in the moment exactly what happened. Did you have to kind of watch it back afterwards and figure out exactly yeah. how the fight ended? So when I landed the first, so it's weird. So um, I don't like looking at my opponents uh, in the build up to my to my fight. So most of the time, most of my opponents I haven't actually watched. Weirdly enough, Yamauchi, I've seen many a times just because we fought on the same shows together quite a few times. But obviously, at the time, he was in a different division. Um, I saw the knockout uh, that he did uh, just before my fight um, with um, Gracie, against Gracie with the uppercut. I didn't actually watch the whole fight, just the, just the highlights. So I, I never really sat down and actually studied, studied the fight, his fight. My coaches are experts at that, so I leave that to them. But just before a fight, I always like to just quickly watch a couple of clips or a couple of fights just to to not even like make sure, but it's more just to kind of um, just line up everything that, you know, my coaches have been saying. And I start to spot, okay, that's what they meant. Oh, okay, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I see that. And there was one thing that I noticed is every time he's on his back foot, he circles away to his right. Sorry, to his left and to my right, which uh, means my power leg and my power hand. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm immediately going to put pressure on him and I'm immediately going to attack that leg and I, I'm, I was only going to do it to invest in it for later in the fight. Mm-hmm. So fight started and I just thought I'm, I'm going to put apply pressure, almost as if I've already figured him out because that's how I usually work. Move around a little bit, tease in, find people out and then start applying pressure because I'm like, okay, I, got, I, I reckon I've got you now. This time I was like, I'm going to start on the front foot. Put crazy pressure on him. You can see him backing up immediately. Landed one clean low kick. He kept backing up, landed another low kick, and he fell. Now, I just thought it was just like, you know, that, like almost like a nervy kick. So right. as soon as he fell, I was like, yeah, jiu-jitsu guy, I'm not falling for that. You're going to have to stand back up, back up. And then I saw him grab his leg. And that's when I was like, oh, it's over. Because you wouldn't grab your leg and show that there's any form of pain, even if there was pain, if we're still in a fight. Because you're now worried about me you know, jumping on top of you and, and, you know, continue to land punches. So the second I saw him hold his leg, I was like, oh, you know, turned and walked off, celebrated, and then looked up at the screen when they were showing the replay. And I was like, what what the hell is that? So he was still on the floor, but I hadn't even, I wasn't even paying attention to him. But I was looking at, when I saw the, the screen, I was, I, I just felt bad. Because mm. I was like, that doesn't look like it's, a, uh, it's, it's you know, uh, a normal injury. Again, I don't know how I keep doing it, but in that moment, I was like, oh man, like, you know, went over to him, spoke to him um, just after, you know, had the interview. But it was, I even said, I think I said it to John, but it's very hard to celebrate in those moments because he's a lovely guy. Right. Like, he really is a lovely guy, amazing martial artist, and someone that I was, I'm a fan of with regards to his style and what he brings to the table. Yeah. And because we fought on the same shows before, I've always, I always kind of like sit down and just uh, on, on the screen in the background and just kind of catch random moments of the fight while I'm getting wrapped or something or warming up. So yeah, it's, it, it was a hard one to celebrate, <laughs> but it seems, I don't know how I keep doing stuff like this. <laughs> it's it's a mad one, isn't it? Because you kind of, as fighters go in there with the mentality of I'm trying to inflict the most amount of damage as I possibly yeah. can to win the yeah, fight. Yeah. But at the same time, you're hoping you're not inflicting long-term damage on your opponent. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I think, I think that's what it is. It's like, yes, I'm trying to knock you out. Yes, I'm trying to submit you, you know, put you in, uh, so you know a certain level of pain uh i guess to make you to make you tap out of the fight sometimes you know you might get little tears and stuff here and there because you know you're, you're you're trying to combat that you're trying to stop that and you know those smaller injuries may come with it but anything like that it's like oh man he, he may be out a year do you know mm-hmm. what i mean like norbert's just come back 
uh, from uh, a knee injury uh, in the gym and it, it put him out about a year and I, I see the emotional strain it was on his face uh, on, on, on uh, that he, he took with that injury. So for me, it's, it's that side of it. We will all recover. Um, will we recover exactly the same? You never know. Hopefully he does. And mentally, can you be, you know, the time when you start to come back and you're walking, can you still keep going to the gym knowing that you haven't got a fight, knowing that you're in a lot of pain and you've got to do it again the next day and the next day and the next day? It's it's very difficult. Um, so, yeah, I, I would never want to pass that on to, to anybody else. Maybe poor Daly, but nobody else. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. Um, but listen, the main thing was it was a it was a massive win, man. That you needed that result yeah. because now yeah. I feel like you're in position. It's Amasov and Storley ahead of you. Amasov and Storley have already fought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to be fighting for the title next, no? So we already kind of had a rough understanding that this fight it it's looking like basically we asked for uh, Jason Jackson. Okay. Um, for this fight um he said he'd prefer not to fight because he is going to be next in line for the title so he wouldn't want to risk losing a fight and then getting pushed back and i was like it, it's for me it's understandable i don't I, 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 I don't believe he's scared in one one bit to, mm. to fight me i know that he would he would scrap but just timing wise he's like yeah i feel like i'm next in line and i think you know he's had a you know a, an amazing run um, and he probably is next in line now, um, or just before he kind of already said, because I've, I've come off a loss, so I'm going back down technically. Um, so he's next in line. So I kind of already had an understanding that I wouldn't be next. Even if I get a result, I wouldn't mm. be directly next. I'll probably be the one after. But then how long do I wait? Do you know what I mean? Because right. my thing is, as he's 26 seconds, I've barely done anything. Um, so... I'm getting twitchy again. You know, I had a, a great time in Miami, but I'm back and I'm twitchy. <laughs> uh, I, I want to fight. And I don't, again, I've always uh, made this statement. I don't really care for the belt side of things. I just enjoy fighting and putting on a show. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so for me, if if it comes down to it, I'm just going to fight again. You know, I'm just going to jump in there and fight again. I, I most likely should be next in line Yeah. after that. Uh, and I don't care to take. I, I don't mind taking the risk and just having another fight because I prefer to be active. So yeah, I'm I'm most likely going to have to have another fight. Uh, but then yeah, you know if if all goes according to plan, it's going to be me again because I want I want that fight. That doesn't surprise me because every time I've interviewed you over the years, it's like yeah, if you had it your way, you'd be fighting every month or every two months because <laughs> you come from yeah. that kickboxing background where you're competing exactly. all the time. So that mm -hmm. doesn't surprise me at all. So if it's not going to be Amosov, if it's not going to be for the title, what makes sense? Does the rematch with Storley make sense for you then? Um, I think he's going to have to gather his um thing, but you know a rematch, I guess, does make sense. Um. Um. I'm trying to think of it's a weird division at the moment. Mm. Koroshkov, I think yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um I'm trying to think of it. Like I said, the only person I was other person I would have said is Jason Jackson. So I right. think yeah, those are the two that probably make sense right. as a uh, another fight. So yeah, that, that could happen. Um I know Larkin's name's been thrown around before as well. Uh, but I know he keeps moving up and down divisions, so I, I don't know exactly where where he's at um yeah. yeah we could do we could do lee three you know what i mean that that, that the trilogy. But he's not he's just yeah just for the sake of i guess because he's not he's, not, he's on a what four fight losing streak i think at the moment um he's not he's not in his best and i think he's actually moving up to middleweight as well yeah um so yeah like it's a bit, a bit of a weird division at the moment um, so maybe, you know, if I have to, if I'm forced to wait, then, you know, I'll go and do a boxing fight or something because obviously, you know, that, you know, I've done it before Bellator will allow it if they, if there's going to be, uh, if there's going to be space where I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be idle. So, you know, I may, may end up doing a boxing fight or doing something else to kind of fill in the, fill in the time, uh, and then come back for the winner of, uh, Jackson and Amosov. You know what I mean? So the, the, I guess there's a couple of options options on the table. So we'll see. Yeah, I want to get to the boxing in a second. But what I'm impressed with now, 
Bellator 2023, I feel like there's a lot of champions that you can have a, a reasonable debate. UFC champion versus Bellator champion and, mm-hmm. and actually have a good barbershop talk in terms of like, who do you think is the better fighter out of the two, Yeah, right? And you look at someone like Amosov, 27 and 0, undefeated, just removing yourself, like what an incredible fighter he is. How do you even assess and break him down? He brings so much to the table. And I know that that would get your juices flowing just oh, to be yeah. able to be the one to give him <laughs> yeah. the L. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah definitely. Seriously, even if I was I was there in Ireland when he was uh, fighting Storley. And I was, sat, I was sat in awe on the sideline because I'm a fan first. I don't care it's about my my position, who I like, my status. I'm a fan of the sport. If I see good martial arts, I love good martial arts. And that was an epic display of martial arts, all rounded. Um, he, yeah, I was every round. I was just like this, like oh, wow, loved it. Like applauding every round. Obviously, I feel like tactically it was terrible from Storley, and weirdly enough, not trying to put myself in the in, in the mix for the sake of um, making it about me. But I feel like the fight with me and Storley made this last fight. Pst, that much worse for him. My reasoning is the criticism he got off of the me and him fighting um, made him feel like he needs to he needs to display how that he can stand up and he can have a striking match with people. And down to the point where it was criticism like across the board, people were questioning the fight. I don't really care about that. But even down to Scott Coker came out. Scott Coker never comes out and makes any real comment on anybody. He was came out against Storley and was disappointed in that result and I think um, that stuck in his head because he spent two rounds standing when he's got such a amazing wrestling degree and I I thought it was going to go the same way they fought the first time it was going to be him shooting non-stop with uh, Amosov defending but with the bonus of the two extra rounds so he took his back last time and I think twice during a fight and he decided to play stand-up. Now, maybe the first round you would go, okay, you know, try something different, give him something, a different look to, to worry about. But after your head's just bouncing back nonstop and you're getting leg kicks and so on and so forth, okay, go into your corner. Corner's like, this game plan is not working. Let's go back to the original game plan. Get on his legs because while he's defending, he's not hitting you. Mm-hmm. and he's gone back in there trying to do the stand-up thing again. What made it worse is the leg kick damage uh, became so bad, he had to switch stance, which means he's now not, no longer in his favoured stance to even do his shots. And from there, I knew it's, it's game over. It's down here. Whether he actually gets finished is uh, is a different thing, but there's no doubt in the result. But one thing I have to say, he's a tough man because some of the shots that he landed on him, he just kept going. The fact that his leg was out, he just kept going. He's a very tough individual and I respect him for, for that. But toughness doesn't always win you the fight. And mm-hmm. I think having a better game plan um, and would would have definitely uh, won him or made that fight a lot more competitive. But at the same time, the, the, you know, the, guy, the guys he was standing across from was just unbelievable that night. Um, and for me... I feel like my style, uh, even like a Jason Jackson style, suits Amosov better because he likes to be a bit more in the pocket where taller, longer range, harder hitters than your stallies. Um, So it's just going to be down to the, the, the wrestling degree. So I think Jason Jackson actually does have a, a, a very, you know, a, a better chance than most. But at the same time, Amosov, you can see he's a very smart fighter. He's the type that would game plan this person uh, uh, and adjust his st- style uh, instead of just you know these are my moves and this is what I'm going to use. So it's it's a, it's going to be a good fight, and I, I I just I would love to to be in there with him just to just to see because I I can see myself sniping him a few times. Um, whether that finishes the fight, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, stylistically, it would be such an incredible matchup, and and Amosov has such an incredible story. Just given what's happening mm-hmm. in Ukraine and everything, yeah, I yeah. don't even think there Horrible. would be any like bad blood between you guys. It would just be pure competition. Respect. Two oh, elite man, fighters I, just going at it, man. I took a picture of him. I was, uh, you know, I met his family and stuff. Like, uh, it's, I feel like everyone feels the need. Like, there has to be a uh, like angry energy amongst like competitors. I'm not even used to that 
from the like my, my competition circuit in the kickboxing, I used to travel around seeing these same people week in, week out in just different parts of the country or different parts of the world. And some of these guys are some of my closest friends even today. And these are people that I've hit in the face many times and they've hit me in the face many times. It doesn't always have to be a negative kind of energy. I think we've, we've kind of created that whole, there needs to be a hype and a build up and a back and forth in order for there, for it to be a good fight. But you, you never know what's going to happen at the end of the day. So, um, but for me, yeah, I got nothing but respect for him. He's a, he's a, a class person um, uh, and, and an amazing martial artist. Well, hopefully we get that fight. But regardless of who you fight next, tell me it's in London. Tell me it's going to be in London town. Because I, I feel like when you've got, when you've got a Michael Venom Page on the roster, you got to book him in London, no? <laughs> you would think that, but you know, look at the, um, the me versus Paul Daly. That didn't, that didn't quite go according to plan. I think that, that was a, they, uh, they missed something uh, mm. there, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's wherever. For me, uh, that's, that's down to them. It's up to them to kind of to, to, to deal with. Um, but for me, I'll just jump on where the opportunity is, wherever that, wherever that fight is. Yeah. I need to be there and fight. You said that you're getting twitchy, but boxing is an option. But I want to go back to 2017, 2018. I think I was at your <laughs> fight at your call, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, I'm thinking, okay, Michael's got a couple of pro boxing fights under his belt now. And again, mm -hmm. I'm talking 2017, 2018, right? Before boxing, which has always been big in the UK, started to get almost like a, 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 a new explosion before yeah. the influence of boxing. Yeah. And at that time, I'm thinking, oh, this is perfect. Michael can mm -hmm. do his MMA thing for Bellator and he can start to rack up some dubs in boxing mm -hmm. and actually mm -hmm. go on a run. Why on earth have you not had another boxing fight since 2018, <laughs> just given what's happened in the sport over the last few years? So it's weird. I always feel like I've always managed to kind of start trends and then you know, not, well, one, not really get too much credit for it. Cause again, as you say, I, I don't think there was anybody else doing it at that time. Um, but then also I can be very controversial and I piss a lot of people off just in my style. Mm. So as you say, you know, I, I was fighting me and Joe Joyce fought at the same time. I, yeah. uh, you won uh, Lawrence, the card. <laughs> exactly. Lawrence yeah. Agoli, me and me and him got our pro licenses at the same time. We was in there getting collecting our pro licenses at the same time. Look where these, you know, look where these people. I was with him in in Miami as well. But look where these people have gone to now. Um, so the only difference is I wasn't officially a boxer. So somebody actually put in a formal complaint to the boxing board saying this MMA fighter shouldn't be allowed to do that. Look what's happened since, as you say. You know, the, the Conor McGregor jumped over and then all the influence of boxing and what's, what's happening back and forth now. Uh, we've already got uh, um, Diaz versus the, uh, Jake Paul. Like, do you know what I mean? So mm. that's that's all flash forward. And as you said, uh, that was transcended since then. But they had an issue with me. Um, since, uh, so after that, I had to go and meet the boxing board, all these guys around, around this big table trying to figure out how we need to make this work and did it oh technically even if you did if you were a professional table tennis person you still wouldn't be able able to do it and i was just like this is sounds like such mm. um and i don't care enough because i'm i've got a career in mixed martial arts i don't care enough to fight for for this so you know we'll leave it and you know you guys sort it out and if i'm able to come back then come back and it's weird since all this influencer stuff come back i'm getting phone calls non-stop do you want to box again oh do you want to box are you interested in boxing and it's annoying <laughs> I, I am interested and i probably will go and box again but yeah. it's just annoying in the way it's, it's all it's all kind of happened because as you say i could have been going back and forth i could have racked up i could be looking to fight some big fights in boxing as well as in mma which is which was my goal yeah, you would have easily at this point had double digit wins, in my opinion. And exactly. it was great to see you take the hands down style into boxing, which not a lot yeah. of people had seen before. And, and, and the reason I remember the York Hall uh, fight was because there's a there's a video clip of me actually looking down at my laptop. So I actually missed <laughs> the, the actual <laughs> KO <laughs> in which happens all the time. If you work in media, sometimes you're looking at your phone, you're looking at your laptop, you're doing a multiple things. So sometimes you miss it. But um if boxing is still in your future, do you mm -hmm. think that's something that you could do in the short term? I'm talking 2023 soon. And and if so, what lane do you think you might walk down? Would it be the more influencer boxing or would it be more traditional pro boxing in a, in a, in a big UK card? 
but so yes, there's definitely a uh, scope and space for me to potentially box again. And that's like I said, if there's if there's a long period, if I decide to take that break break and wait for you know the the, the Amosov and Jackson to have a fight and then look to see who I'm going to fight after that. Then there's, and obviously there's going to be even more time after that um, for them to recover from that fight and so on and so forth and be ready. So yeah, there's definitely scope for me to have a boxing fight. Um, what lane would it be? And it's difficult now. Cause it's like, I don't, I don't, you know, if I, if I was able to, kin- if I wasn't stopped from progressing back then, then you know it would just be the pro, you know the pro yeah. shows, and, and I wouldn't really have any inter- too much interest in, in this side. I I enjoy it, uh, as, you know, as a spectacle, but I wouldn't have too much uh, interest in being a part of it. Now it kind of make it almost m- makes more sense to be in and around that. So even if it's a case of potentially me and another pro, but in the arena of um, this kind of influencer boxing uh, show, that might make more sense. Um, because I, 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 and it's more a case of I don't care to go through the politics on on the other side, um, and have time wasted any more time wasted that side. So it's more just because of politics. I'd think I'd, I'd otherwise I would have probably tried to jump back in on the pro side, but mm. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. To, it's, hard, it's hard to tell. But yeah, definitely scope for me to go back and do boxing though. Definitely. For sure. And speaking of boxing, people don't know that London Shoot isn't just an MMA gym. It's an all-round mm-hmm. combat sports gym. It is a boxing gym. <laughs> yeah. Derek Chisora trains out of there. And <laughs> speaking of influencer boxing, KSI chose London Shoot to be mm-hmm. his, his gym. Um, mm-hmm. How did that come about? Like, Was it just one random day <clears throat> that you saw KSI in the gym? Did you have a relationship with him beforehand? And have you got to know him on a personal level since he's been in London Shoot? Yeah, so he... Um... His manager, Mams, is uh, and uh, my coaches, Alexis and, uh, and Marius, uh, were friends a long time. So they've been friends for many years, and obviously, you know, when you when you're friends with someone, you can you can see each other's growth. The, you know, Mams can see how amazing the gym is. He's come in a couple of times just to be around his friend and see the you know the talent level in the gym and see the you know we've had. David Hay in the gym as a boxer. You say Derek Chisora. Seeing they used to coach um, Dylan White um, for his for his first his first and only MMA fight and his kickboxing fights and so on and so forth. So he's seen the, their progression as a gym and vice versa. Obviously, they've seen his progression with his management and who he's managing now and so on and so forth. I think Mams asked. Uh, I think I'm sure it was like they, he wasn't happy with the the training that was you know um, JJ was getting at the time and. I don't even know if it was a case of him coming over full time. It was more almost like filling the gap for him to find somebody. But you know, when you actually get in uh, and and to training with uh, the the London Shoot guys, you see the one the technical side of it, but also the the um, the work that we put in. We've had guys from all levels of MMA, all levels of boxing, come and they're like. You guys train like this every day. Like <laughs> they don't get it. Like Alexis is a beast, and he he does not he does not care. He'll push you to you you want to till you don't you want to question your your life decisions. <laughs> so um, JJ's got there. Obviously, you see the transformation. One in his his physicality, his fitness, his technical ability, and then it's just a case of yeah, why would you go anywhere that's working? You know, go anywhere else and it's working where, where you're at. So. Um, and yes, uh, obviously, just because you see, I see him near enough every day, you just you develop a, a certain uh, relationship with him. But at the same time, I don't like to to bug people. You know, he's 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 uh, I've, like, the type of fame that is 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 almost scary. And at the time, I didn't because I didn't really follow it in the same way. I knew who he was, um, but most of the other guys and stuff, I don't really. You know, I don't even now. I don't really kind of get into it too much. Um, but you see the the, the, the level, and I'm talking from kids that are four years old that know who he is to adults, 60 plus, that know who he is. Um, and, you know, the, the the different level of, like I say, fame that is, it's, it's, it's scary level of fame. But he respects everybody in the gym um, and he gets on with everybody in the gym. He fits right in and everybody gets on with him. So it's, it's cool. And we're, we're, we're quite a private gym anyway. Nobody's in there trying to, um, get selfies for likes and stuff. So he feels comfortable uh, in there. So, you know, I think people are used to so many uh, stars coming in from all walks of life. You know, Skepta used to uh, train in our gym as well. Um, like just people like that just randomly walk through. So I think the guys in the gym are used to it. Um, 
and so it feels it feels it's a nice getaway for a lot of these uh, celebrities. So uh, as well as a place to work really hard. I even feel like he's emulated a bit of your style. If you see yeah, the way yeah, we, his boxing yeah. fights played out, I'm like, <laughs> I see a little MVP yeah. in him, you know? Yeah, we've shown him a few tricks. We've shown him a few tricks. And um, uh, like, this is another thing like I, I'm, I'm happy for. If I don't achieve nothing else, I feel like I've left the mark, even just in my style. Um, seeing KSI, you know, utilize these moves is unbelievable. For me, it's, 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 uh, it's almost like a thank you to, to, you know, to, for bringing the style. Seeing just even seeing Alexis pass it on to the other guys in the gym, people come to our gym and they're, they're not accustomed to how a lot of our, the MMA fighters in the gym move. And it's because I've, I've managed to introduce and, and, and spread that kind of uh, my style. And, 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 you know, Alexis is great at infusing it with everything else uh, and other, you know, other styles that are making it match everybody. So everybody's movement in the gym is unbelievable. You see from like the likes of like Norbert Naveni, um, his style sideways on, Felix Klinkhammer, his style, sideways on, bouncing, moving. I, I'm, I'm passing it down to a lot of the guys in the gym and, I, and, and I'm, I'm thankful to be able to, to leave something behind. Well, we've covered off boxing, but now I want to talk about BKFC because I feel like, Mike, you are a combat sports renaissance man. Show me another fighter that has done kickboxing, MMA, boxing, and BKFC, right? Mm. You put yourself out there, you take chances, you take risks. The, the result didn't go your way with Mike Perry in BKFC. Mm -hmm. Now looking back on that experience, what did you take away from it all? I, weird, weird enough, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I think Mike Perry is a great person, full stop. Like just a great character to have in the build up. I think he's fighting soon as well. Um, again, is it this weekend or next weekend, something like that. Um, and uh, he's, he's just a cool character. As much as he kind of likes to play the game, he's very respectful. You know, when I met him, he's just a lovely, lovely person. But that guy will go out on his shield. He is a part, like, so it was a great fight. One, I think it's a, it a great fight to, not that I care to display it, but it displayed my toughness as well. Because no, people are not used to seeing that side of me, having to dig deep um, and get into a scrap, you know? Uh, so it was, it was a, it was a fun fight. It wasn't the type of fight that my coach likes to see. <laughs> um, and, and none of my uh, friends or family liked to see either. Cause I, I came out like a balloon, like swollen, swollen up, hands were swollen. Um, but I actually had a, I had, actually had a lot of fun and potentially might do that one more time. I like to try and go out on a win. <laughs> I was going to say, was, uh, it was good. Maybe with Mike Perry, we could do a combat sports trilogy. You know, he gets the win in BKFC. Maybe we can do an MMA fight and maybe we can do a boxing fight. And that way you've yeah, got yeah. a very unique situation there. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I guess I guess you can. And obviously there's there's space for, for things like that to happen now with the all influential boxing because they kind of make up their own rules of what or, you know, what they're going to do. So um, there's definitely space for that. And I'm sure he'll be up for it 100%. Yeah. And earlier on, you did mention, you know, Jake Paul, Nate Diaz, like that is one of the biggest blockbuster combat sports events of the year. Were you surprised that this was going to be Nate Diaz's first boxing fight? And and how do you even think that fight plays out? I, I see people leaning in two different directions here. Yeah, um, surprised. No, like I said, you know, he's, he's, I think a lot of these guys that I leave in these, these type of shows are, are looking for these influential, influencer boxing events to get big big paychecks so um if mma looked after their fighters a bit better and i say mma as a whole looked after their fighters a bit better uh you'd probably see less people trying to jump ship and just go in just for a quick payday because i think it doesn't look good on the sport especially if they go over and they're not doing well mm. um uh so um but with regards to the fight i think you know Diaz is a he's a bloody zombie. Like you hit him loads of times, and he'll just keep getting up and you know walking towards you, throwing a million punches, uh, and that can be very very uh, tiring for anybody. Um, the likeliness is though he gets knocked down a few times. So and if they if it goes to a decision because he's been knocked down, you know it looks like it's going to lean like Jake Paul's way. Um, so, and, and I do see him landing a couple of punches and, and knocking him over, not knocking him out. Um, and like I said, I, I think it's just going to go that way unless, uh, he gets really overwhelmed. He might knock him down a few times. He gets really overwhelmed, tires out. Cause I don't think his fitness is the greatest, um, when 
I'm talking Jake Paul here, when he gets slightly deeper into the rounds. Um, so after about three and four, he started, you can see a, a massive dip in his, you know, timing and stuff. Um, I think if he gets massively overwhelmed, he could probably end up, you know, getting knocked out himself. And I think that's, that it could potentially go that way as well. But if he's smart enough and keeps his distance and just lands a couple of clean punches, he'll probably win on decision. Well, it's a fight that I think everyone's going to be watching regardless because there's going to be so much hype and promotion around it. You, mm -hmm. you know, before speaking to you, I did a little digging and I started to watch a lot of our other interviews only because I haven't spoken to you in a while. And there's a fantastic mm -hmm. sit-down interview or conversation you had with both Brian Campbell and Luke Thomas in London when those boys were in town for Morning Combat. And there's a, a very specific quote that stuck with me. And it was you talking about having success or enjoying success but at the same time also dealing with some depression or, or or having negative thoughts in your mind and trying to you know overcome that and power through and that kind of really stuck with me because i've had periods of of that in my life where you know if i look if i take a 10,000 foot view i've got so many great things going for me but sometimes negative thoughts creep into my mind and i'm just curious you know when you said that is that coming from personal experience or is that coming from people around you that have gone through that as well I battle with demons every single day. Um, and the, the the demon could be like, oh, you're too tired, don't get up. You know, oh, you're, you're hurt from yesterday. Or um, is it really worth it? Or should you be doing this anymore? Or you're getting too old now. Or this, that, that you have demons. And I think everybody goes through it. You're going to have the negative side. But it's weird. A lot of people maybe, I think I've learned to listen to them. And it sounds weird to say that, but listen to them so I can get everything out of your system. I want to hear, I want to hear it all. All the excuses, all the things that you, you know, telling me that is going working against me. I want to hear all of it. I want to hear all of it. But once you're finished, I need the other guys to come in and be like, but this, but also this. No, but if you get up now, trust me, it's going to be worth it because of this. And if you do this, and it because then I finish on the good note. There's no point trying to ignore the demons and the, those those voices that come in that are negative because I feel people, we have a natural, it's, I think it's more to do with our survival skills that are left idle. We we used to have survival skills to you know survive out in the wild with dangerous animals around. Now we don't really have much. We're, we live in a very convenient world. So those voices and those survival skill voices are now like, oh, you're not getting enough likes on, on this picture. I know you're not doing this. It changes slightly and that can cause depression because like I said, it's been left idle. So it's like, I need to talk about, I need to say something almost. So it's like, cool, let me let you do your job. Say as much as you want. Once you finish, I'm not interested in talking to you anymore. And I go through this even during fights, not during fights, sorry, just before fights. So in the buildup of fights, I try to think about everything that could go wrong and keep just going that I'm focusing. I want to have this conversation with the negative, the, the negative side, the negative voices, the demons. I want to have this conversation with you. Let's have it. Tell me everything that you think is about to go wrong. And I'm like, yep, you're right. That could go. Yeah. Man, it could be embarrassing if I get knocked out there. Yeah. You know, that's not going to look good. Yeah. People are saying this. Yeah. Okay. They might be right about it. Okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. You finished. Cool. Now here's all the stuff that's good. And I'll just, I'll say stuff like that to myself. Yep. Yeah. I'll combat everything that you've just, uh, thrown to me and I think I've just learned over time how to navigate those things and some people don't they try to avoid them and sometimes you know during a fight you can get hit and the negative voice comes back in in that moment the worst time so this is why I'm like let me try and get it all out as quickly as possible and then when I get hit I'm like lucky shot I don't think of it as anything else I'm like I'm still in my positive mindset and, and space and yeah this is why it's important to also even during your success even you know I remember when the first time, you know, somebody had mentioned me in an interview with Anderson Silva and he mentioned me and it's like, man, wow, like that's, that's great. But I celebrate it. Like, oh man, you know, I feel good about yourself. You're on the right track. That's, that's, that's amazing. Don't overlook these moments. Like you really got to sit, sit down and say, man, you pat yourself on the back. You know, if it's a case of, I always say to some of my friends, I'm like, cause they're so driven to, to achieve, achieve, achieve. They achieve all this stuff and then they're stressed about something. I, you know, I wasn't able to get so like, so just take a moment. You told me you'd done all these 10 things just to get to this point. Back then you wouldn't, you would never even seen this. And now you're complaining about having achieved this one yet. 
do me a favor let's go out for a drink just to achieve these things like the, just to show appreciation to what you've achieved over here first and then you know continue on your journey but if you don't show appreciation it can success can still be depressing um so you you need to learn how to manage manage these demons this is why I've missed speaking to fighters like you. You, got, you you guys put your heart on your sleeve, you open up, you let us in um, and, and hopefully other people can take inspiration from what you've just said there. I certainly mm -hmm. have. Um, like I said, yeah. I kind of saw the first quote in the other interview with Morning Combat mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to kind of just noodle on that a little bit more with you. Yeah. So I really appreciate the response no there. Problem. I always like to end my conversations, Mike, on a positive note, something yeah. a little bit fun. It's called The Bit for Social. Right. And it's different every single week with every single fighter or person I'm speaking to. So for you, we're going to do MVP or LVP. So most valuable or least valuable. Right. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to reel off a bunch of names. And all you need to tell me is whether you think they're an MVP or an LVP. OK, OK. Israel Adesanya. MVP. Easy. Jake Paul. I respect him for different things, but I'm gonna fighting wise, we're just gonna say LVP. All right. England manager Gareth Southgate. You know what? MVP. I think he's done well. Elon Musk. MVP. Colby Covington. LVP. Paul Daly. <laughs> Is there one below LVP? <laughs> Because <laughs> he's he's below them. Yeah, yeah, he's below that. Leon Edwards. MVP. And finally Francis Ngannou. MVP. Like he's a he's he's a beast, man. I you know he's kind of had a bit of a hit on his direction of career, but definitely MVP. I love it. Mike, I have missed this so, so <laughs> much. Um, I'm going to be hitting you up a lot more moving forward. Definitely. I wish you nothing but success in BKFC, boxing, Bellator, your life outside of combat sports. I know you've got a lot of things cooking. We'll save yeah, that for another time. I know you, yeah, you yeah. want to get into acting and, and yeah, bits and pieces. I know. I've been, I've been watching. I'm listening. I know. I've been paying attention. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate the time, Mike. I really no, do. Thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and next time I'm, I'm in London, I'm going to hit you up because I'll start traveling back a little bit more often these days. So I'll hit you nice. up for sure. Nice, nice. No, yeah, guys, please, please. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be great to connect properly. Would and uh, good to see you looking well. Thank you for having me on the show as well. I appreciate um, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good catching up. Uh, take care, Mike, and we'll speak to you soon, man. Nice one, man. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. It really means a lot to me. And hey, listen, if you enjoyed this episode, please go and give it a follow on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your shows.